Hey everybody, it's time to get some inky fingers here on The Pen Habit. We've got another Ink Spot review for you today. And in this review, we're going to be looking at Franklin Christoph Terra Firma. Now, this little uh, sample vial of ink was provided free of charge by Franklin Christoph uh, for review purposes. No other compensation was provided, and all opinions expressed herein are my own. And uh, thankful for them for providing this ink for review. So, Terra Firma is one of their newest inks. It's, uh, I did a review a couple months back of their purple, which is Tenebris Purpuratum. This is another one in that same family of inks. They all came out about the same time. These inks sell in what are essentially 60 milliliter bottles. They're technically two ounce bottles because we're here in the U.S. And for some stupid reason, the U.S. hasn't moved to the metric system. But whatever. I it's technically 59 milliliters, but uh, we'll, we'll say 60 milliliters to make it nice and easy. Uh, 60 milliliter bottle for $12.50. It is, uh, I think, a very reasonable price for as much ink as you get. Uh, there are very few inks on the market today that are that price and have that much ink in the bottle. So nice, nice value dollar value there for, for the ink. So what we'll do in this video review is I'm going to go ahead and write with a few different pens to show you how the ink writes. We'll walk you through my um, written reviews that I've done on various papers, show you some chromatography, and then show you some comparables. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to start off with, we will pick a fine nib to start off with. This is, and I try to use the same pens for all of my ink reviews. This is the Jin Hao AO 599. So here you see, um, and I, I'll try to color correct this on the video to get it as close as to, it is to what I'm seeing here. Um, a little bit of a reddish tint here, but still mostly brown is what we're seeing on that first one. And we've got a medium nib. This is a Lamy Vista. Start to see a little bit more red here in this line and start to see some shading. Now, this Vista in particular is not the wettest of pens. Um, it's, it's kind of a uh, on the dry side of medium wetness. Uh, and I like to use it to show you kind of what a drier line looks like. This Lamy all Star is on the wet side of medium and quite a bit further on the wet side of medium. So you can see a little bit here um, the color change and the difference there. Um, I like this in a wetter nib. The ink is just a little on the dry side. Um, so to me, this ink really sings in a wetter nib. Of course, that's true of most inks. So what are you going to do? Lamy. All star. But really, the wetter you get, the more red you start to see in the color. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Um, a little bit less of the shading here than you see, like right here on the medium, but still pretty nice. Uh, let's do a stub nib, shall we? So this is the 1.5 millimeter nib from the Twisby. VAC 700. And I would consider this a very medium ink flow for a stub nib. It's not a juicy stub. It's not a dry stub. It's kind of right in the middle. But you can see, start to get a lot of neat characteristics in the stub nib. Um, then we will attempt, and I, I say that lightly, or I, I say that with a little bit of trepidation, attempt to do, I, you notice the one of the things I don't like about these pilot ink cartridges is sometimes the ink gets trapped up at the top of the the, the uh, converter. Get, get a little bit of a, a bubble there. So I'm going to try to flick it down because sometimes, sometimes the ink just stops running on this thing. It's one of the things I dislike most about these uh, Con 50 converters from Pilot. And then I get little ink splots on the paper. Uh, we'll do a, f a bit of flex writing here. So yeah. So you'll notice this ink doesn't generally tend to like to keep its surface uh, tension very well. Uh, let me let me just do a little bit of uh, coaxing here, just just a moment while I imagine some you know some chipper music in the background while I'm doing this work. 
something, but we're not here. I just dipped it so you can get a, an example of what it looks like if it were in a different pen. Um, you know, something, this is a, kind of a very wet, um, you get an almost coffee-like quality to the ink when it's very wet, more, more on the brown side. Custom Heritage 912. So, yeah, there we go. Get the, get the ink going that way a little bit. That seems to help a, a touch. So, okay. All right. And then with Flex, we're after Flex, we will take a quick look here at the 3.8 millimeter Pilot Parallels. Um, just so you can see what it looks like. Now, if I were to go really slow and put you all to sleep... I could try to make it look a little bit more like real writing, but hey, nobody got time for that. <sighs> okay, here we go. Pilot. Parallels. Oh, okay. So here you can see what we what we have in all these different pens. We've got uh, you know kind of a little bit more of a brownish tone on the the lighter things, and that's uh, that's what I get for dipping a pen in the middle of a video. Told you, inky fingers. Uh, we've got a little bit a little bit more of red quality on the broad here, and the one point five millimeter, very dark when it's very wet, um, but but nice shading um, you can see here in the, the Pilot Parallels and the Dryer Flex. Okay, so that is what we get when I am stumbling through recording a video live. Here's what happens when I'm not videotaping ahead <laughs> of time. So this is Rhodia.pad. Um, you can see very wet when I first started here, so you've got more of that chocolatey brown color here going on with, with the red undertones. Um, but it's a very matte finish. It's not, you don't get a lot of sheen. Um, I don't find it very a very deep color. It feels kind of dusty and a little bit um, flat, which depending on the look you're going for, sometimes I really like. Uh, here's the same pens that you saw again with slightly neater handwriting. On the dry times, this actually was almost completely dry by 15 and completely dry by 20. That's pretty good for Rhodia paper. Usually it's 20 to 25 before it's completely dry. Um, or, or a little bit on the longer side. So, you know, almost completely dry by 15 is actually pretty good on this paper. Uh, you've got the multiple passes, so you've got that lighter color there. Um, and then the one, I'd say probably the biggest downside to this ink uh, is that it it's just not, there's no nothing in the way of permanence, really. Here's a water drip test, water rub, bleach, which completely obliterated it, and ammonia, which almost completely obliterated it. Um, so this is not an ink, if you're worried about permanence at all, this is probably not an ink you'd, you'd want to go after. Um, flipping the pen over, or the paper over here, uh, we've got really no bleed through to speak of anywhere on the Rhodia paper. That's pretty darn good. So I gave it a 10 here for bleed. Uh, color, I like this color a lot. I really like that terracotta-y color. This is a little darker than terracotta and a little bit more on the brown side, um, which I like. I find if we were going for regular terracotta to be just a touch too red. No feathering at all on these. Um, I would probably revisit this flow to make it a 6 or a 7. Um, I, I think this pen had a little... Um, was still a little wet from its fill, and so it felt like the flow was a little better than it actually is. This ink does tend to run just a touch on the dry side. Great if you're looking for uh, if you're looking for use on a cheap paper, and we'll get to that in just a second too. Um, it's moderately lubricated. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Um, again, moderate saturation, a little bit better than normal saturation. Really good shading though. I like the shading on this ink a lot, and you get more of that in you know, with certain pens, and uh, like, look at, you can see the, there on the medium again, there on the Pilot Parallel. So this ink shades pretty well. There's no sheen at all, and the show through, there's a tiny little bit of show through here, but none of it's really terrible. So that is Rhodia paper. Now let's me find a place in my cluttered desk to switch to Tomoe River. So this is 52 
uh, GSM, Tomoe River paper, cream colored paper. On this paper, and I'm going to pull these side by side here, um, you can see there's going to be a little bit more of a reddish tone on the, the white paper than there is on this cream colored paper. I also found the saturation on the Tomoe River to be a little bit less than it is on the Rhodia. So just to keep that in mind. Um, but I find the shading to be much, much, much better and much more binary. I like the shading on this a lot on the Tomoe River. Um, fairly long dry times, unfortunately. That's the one downside to Tomoe River paper in general. This ink isn't as long as some dry times, but it's longer than a lot of them on this paper. Uh, then we've got the multiple passes here. Now, we don't get a sheen, but you can kind of see some really interesting, like, dark bluish red uh, edges right around the pooling. It's, it's, not a, it's not a sheen in the traditional sense, though. I, don't, I, I wouldn't classify it as such. Um, in terms of bleed, there is some, and I don't count this big ink, ink splotch, but there is some bleed. Uh, you could see some, like, just starting to peek through here peek through here. I saw it mostly on the flex writing where, you know, the tines are actually almost cutting the paper a little bit. It's not bad, though, on this paper at all. I like the color even more on this paper than I do on the Rhodia. This, to me, is a little bit too red, um, whereas I like this brown a little bit more. Um, we've got no feathering at all. Again, flow, I would probably not keep it an eight. I'd probably put it about a six or a seven. Uh, lubrication, a little less lubricated feeling on this paper, a little less saturated feeling on this paper. Better shading, again, no sheen, and show through is not great here. Um, uh, you know, even with just, you can see a little fine and medium, you can see some show through there. It's not terrible. I could still use the backside of this paper, but it's, it's not quite as good as it was on the on the uh, Rhodia paper. Then finally, take a quick look at cheap copy paper. And this is, in my opinion, where this ink really, really shines. So uh, we've got the same pens that we used before, but what I'd like to point out is usually with this cheap copy paper, and this is Staple 75 GSM, um, just regular bottom of the rung, cheapest copy paper I could find. Uh, there is almost no feathering. There's a tiny bit of, of feathering down here, but even on the rest of the writing, the feathering is minor. Um, there's almost no major feathering. I mean, you could see a little bit of fuzziness around the edges of the letters, but for cheap paper, this is actually really, really good in terms of its, uh, its lack of feathering. The other thing that really surprised me is, look at the lack of bleed through. I mean, here's, the, here's fine, medium, broad, you see a tiny little bit of bleed through starting on the 1.5 millimeter stub. The flex, again, I expect to see bleeding on the flex, but even the 3.8 millimeter, there's not a lot of bleed through. So if you're stuck using bad quality paper and you want a color in this red-brown uh, family, this might really be an ink you like. Uh, I was quite impressed at its performance on inexpensive paper. Then I wanted to show you the chromatography. Now, if you watched the intro of the video, you saw the chrome. Oh, get that focus. There we go. You saw the, come on, you saw the chromatography in real time. Um, boy, that is, I need to put this on manual focus, I think. So if you watched the intro of this video, you saw this chromatography in real time, but I wanted to kind of go through it in after it's had a chance to dry. One of the things you'll notice, and for some reason my camera's freaking out here, one of the things you'll notice is there is no pigment left on the lower part of this. I mean, it's the water just sucked all of the pigment away. Um, you've got a really complex line of dye, though, so you've got a nice kind of, it's hard to see in the video, but a line of kind of bluish green, very pale, uh, right along the, the edge here, a bright gold yellow, some oranges, and then a bluish purple um, kind of streak leading edge here. So this is a pretty complex ink in terms of color family, and for some reason the focus on this camera is going nuts. Going to need to switch it to manual focus, I think. And then finally, uh, I wanted to go through and show you some comparables to this ink. Now, I don't have a lot of comparables in my ink collection. There may be some out there that I'm not familiar with, but in the inks that I have in my collection, um, I didn't find a lot that were really close. There are a couple that are kind of in that same area, but none that are super exactly the same thing. So here is Franklin Christoph Terra Firma, which is our 
our mother ink here, uh, Diamine Oxblood, which has a lot of that kind of brownish, red-brown quality, but certainly more red and almost a little bit more purple or blue to it. Uh, Diamine Red Dragon, which is much more on the red side. Pilot Iroshizuku Tsukushi, um, almost all brown here. We've got Sailor Gentle Okuyama, which is more toward the purple end. And then we start to get, I think, probably the two closest I have in my collection, which is Mont Blanc Da Vinci Red Chalk. And this is a reddish orange. Um, it's got more, certainly got more orange to it. I will say that if you look at this part of the, the swatch here, um, it's very close, but with just a touch more of an orange hue to it. The other one that I think is, is fairly close, but also with more orange in it, is Diamine Ancient Copper. Those are probably the two closest ones that I've got in my collection. Then I've got Private Reserve Copper Burst, uh, Sailor Gentle Bung Box Kabayaki Eel, and Diamine Autumn Oak, none of which are super close. So this is, while there are other inks in this family, this is the only one that, that occupies exactly the same space that it does. Um, others come close, the Mont Blanc, uh, Da Vinci Red Chalk and Diamine Ancient Copper both come close, but uh, Franklin Christoph Terra Firm is kind of off in its own a little bit. So, I think that should do it for this review, this Ink Spot review of Franklin Christoph Terra Firma. Thank you again to Franklin Christoph for providing this ink for review. If you have any questions or comments, please head over to penhabit.com and leave a comment on this blog post over there. You'll also be able to see a bunch of color corrected photos. Uh, to get a better sense of what this ink looks like uh, in real life. Sometimes it's harder to correct color correct video than it is to color correct photos. Um, and I've been playing around with a new lighting setup, so the lighting might not be quite right on this video. We'll see. Uh, and then uh, you can also leave a comment here on YouTube, obviously, or find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Google+. Candyland, whatever. I, I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I have several haunts across the internet. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time we do another one of these Ink Spot reviews on the Pen Habit. Have a good one. Bye. For review purposes, uh, all opinions expressed are my own, so uh, try to be as... <sighs> Let's go ahead and dive in. So the way this is going to work is, as always, I will do a... Oh my gosh, I feel like the Rain Man here. It's the joy of doing all these videos in one shot. Some of that might end up on the, the uh, whatchamacallit. Use your words, man. Oh my gosh. Might end up on the blooper reel.